Every single day, millions of tons of grain and raw materials travel across the oceans on massive ships. A bulk carrier is a specialized cargo ship designed to transport large quantities of unpackaged goods. But these ships weren't always this massive or efficient. Today, we'll explore how bulk carriers work and why they are vital to global logistics. 2,000 years ago, the Roman Empire relied on grain shipment to feed its growing population. Grains were transported on wooden ships called corbidas. A corbida was around 30 meters long and could carry roughly over 200 tons of cargo. Loading a Roman grain ship was slow, done by hand, carrying each sack and stacking them under the deck, taking days. Now compare that to a modern boat carrier stretching over 300 meters, and most ships can carry between 200 and 300 thousand tons of cargo. Powerful cranes and conveyor systems can load a boat carrier in just a few hours. Now we can see how far the shipping industry has developed over 2,000 years. Unlike container ships, bulk carriers rely on vast cargo holds where grain is poured directly. At specialized grain terminals, the conveyor system transports grain from the silos into the cargo hold. Standard loading rates vary between 100 and 700 tons per hour while the most advanced ports can achieve rates of up to 16,000 tons per hour. When loading, even distribution is important to maintain stability. Homogeneous loading involves evenly distributing cargo across all holds, a method commonly used for grain or coal. When carrying high-density cargo like iron ore, an alternate hole loading method is used. Another approach is a block hold loading method when loading commodities like wheat, it is crucial to monitor the weather conditions. If it rains, the loading process must be paused, the hatches closed, and loading resumed only when the rain stops. Once a vessel is fully loaded with grain, the hatches are closed to protect the cargo inside. Workers apply hatch sealing tape to cover any gaps, preventing water from entering and damaging the grain. However, grain isn't the only cargo these ships can carry. Boat carriers also transport coal, iron ore, and even steel coils. The massive roll of steel you sometimes see strapped onto an 18-wheeler on the highway. Every time I see one while driving, I steer clear of that thing. It is terrifying. Get back to the cargo. Each voyage is dedicated to just one type of cargo to prevent contamination. Now the ship is fully loaded and ready to set sail. Once a ship reaches its destination, it must unload the cargo. Bulk carriers can unload cargo independently as many are equipped with onboard cranes capable of lifting up to 35 tons. Another better option for unloading is using gantry cranes provided at the port. For unloading grain cargo, clamshell buckets are used to scoop up the material and transfer it to a hopper. From there, the cargo is transported to storage via a conveyor belt system. When the cargo level becomes too low for the clamshell buckets to reach, a bulldozer is sent down into the hold to push the remaining cargo toward the center for easier collection. After unloading all the cargo, the holes are washed down with fresh water. The hold is designed with sloped tank tops that direct water toward the bilge wells. The washed water is then pumped into the slop tank. However, some residue remains trapped inside the bilge wells, requiring workers to enter this dark and confined space to clean them manually. Once cleaning is complete, air blowers are used to dry the hold. Let's go over the structure of the vessel. The superstructure is located at the aft, or rear of the ship, and it houses the navigation bridge, crew accommodations, and various operational rooms. At the very top, we have the compass deck, home to radar systems, antennas, and satellite communication equipment. Below that is the bridge deck, 
where the ship's wheelhouse is located. This is where the captain and officers navigate the vessel. Moving down to deck D, there are cabins for captain, chief engineers, and officers. Those are important officers, and they need to stay near the wheelhouse for quick access. C and B decks, where most of the crew members live. Their rooms are small but functional, equipped with basic comforts for long voyages. On B deck, there's also access to stern lifeboat. On A deck, we find the galley, dining area, and a common lounge where crew members can chill after a long shift. This is a fast rescue craft, a high-speed vessel designed for search and rescue purposes. Inside the upper deck, you find essential facilities like the cold storage for food and vegetable, the air conditioning room, laundry facilities, gym, infirmary, meeting room, fire control room, and CO2 room for fire suppression. A modern boat carrier typically operates with 20 to 30 crew members. It's a small team responsible for running a massive ship. Now let's go below deck to the engine room. At the center is the main engine. Diesel generators supplying electricity for the ship. Steering gear. The engine control room. Fresh water tanks. Other service tanks such as lubricant, sludge, and slop tanks. Boat carriers are equipped with cranes on board, allowing them to unload cargo without relying on port infrastructure. Workers must climb up to the ladder to the control cabin to operate it. There's no elevator. On the center hatch, you may notice a marking that says winch only. This is not a landing pad. It's a designated area where a helicopter can lower supplies or personnel using a winching system. Clamshell bucket. Gangway, used for boarding and disembarkation. Moving to the hull structure of the ship. The hull is built using a transverse frame structure reinforced with longitudinal stiffeners. side shell frames which help to resist pressure from both the cargo inside and the ocean outside. These spaces are used for water ballast tanks and these are fuel oil tanks. This ship has five cargo holds separated by corrugated transverse bulkheads in 1997, the IMO introduced new regulations to strengthen bulkheads and improve inspection procedures to detect structural weaknesses and corrosion. These changes were necessary because, in the early 1990s, several bulk carriers suffered catastrophic failures when seawater flooded into a hold 1 due to faulty, non-watertight hatch covers. The situation worsened when the forward bulkhead, made of thin, high tensile steel, corroded and cracked, allowing water to rush into hold 2. This led to rapid sinking, mostly happened to ships that were older than 20 years. If hold 5 was flooded, the ship would submerge with the aft, potentially flooding the engine room. If water entered the middle holds, it could cause a ship to sag, leading to structural failure, breakage, and an oil spill. This is why constant inspection and timely maintenance are critical. Compared to the 1990s, modern boat carriers are far safer now thanks to stricter regulations. In a global trade aspect, boat carriers play a critical role in feeding the world. For an example, it starts in a grain exporting country at the port Bulk carriers are loaded with thousands of tons of raw grain. Once fully loaded, they set sail to an importing nation. When the ship arrives, the grain is unloaded and sent to mills and factories for processing. Here, it is transformed into products such as flour, cooking oil, or even animal feed. Some of the products is consumed locally, and a large portion is packaged and exported to multiple countries. Thank you for watching. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comment below. My name is Lucius. I will see you in the next video.